Now, South Africans are continuing to dig deep as the cost of living is skyrocketing. Consumers battling with exorbitant food and fuel prices. Throw in some few eggs there now. This week with this uh, avian flu, you know how tough it can get. Will there be a reprieve soon or should South Africans brace for a tough and bleak festive period? Well, let's find out uh, from the Reserve Bank Governor if he'll be like a Father Christmas uh, come, uh, come this, uh, this season in terms of interest rates. Uh, Governor, welcome to today. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Good to be here. Yeah. Can, can we just start first uh, with just where we've ended now with Antipi, if, if, if you don't mind? I mean, the cost of living, no matter where you look at it, mm -hmm. it's really, really uh, 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 crippling many, many households in, in South Africa. The Reserve Bank, when you look at this, uh, uh, what can you do, if anything at all? Look, uh, Dan, uh, there is no doubt that uh, households are under, uh, under pressure. Uh, and this had been uh, going since prices started to rise. Um, just to get a sense of it, uh, what we, we do is to look at statistics South Africa. They take the income earners in South Africa and they divide them into what they call deciles. And when we look at the uh, bottom two deciles, decile one and decile, uh, decile two, uh, these are people with, who are living on social grants and all of that. Those people are facing inflation of 9%. Inflation is at 4.8%. Uh, Those people are facing inflation of about 9%. And that's, so that tells you the magnitude. And the, the point here is that those people send, pretend to spend more money on food and they tend to spend more uh, money on transport. And that is exactly what had been, uh, uh, what had been rising. The problem with uh, both food and, uh, and transport is that uh, they feed into uh, other prices. And if they feed into other prices, that is where the Reserve Bank uh, comes in. And we have got to be able to arrest that. And the point here is that prices are rising and they erode the purchasing power of the incomes of the, uh, uh, the households. And the unfortunate way, the uh, thing that we'd have to deal with is that uh, as a central bank, we are going to have to step in and arrest the rise in prices. And the tools that we use is going to be the interest rate uh, tool. It's a medicine that is used. Uh, it's not a very sweet medicine, uh, but it is what works. We're seeing it elsewhere in the world. I mean, South Africa is not alone in, in, in the question of uh, hiking interest rates. The U.S. and Europe recently, there's, there's noises coming out of there about concerns of uh, keeping interest rates high for, for some time. So you're saying we're going to be faced with that prospect here in South Africa of, uh, of, of higher interest rates, given this scenario you've just explained. Uh, it's two components. One is that inflation has actually surprised uh, many central bankers and policy makers around uh, the world. When inflation first set out in uh, 2021, as the world was reopening from the great lockdown, um, many people were trying to convince themselves that the rise in inflation is temporary. And the central banks that moved earlier were the central banks of Latin America. We also moved in 2021, tightening uh, policy. That was only in uh, November 2021, uh, though. Uh, that seems to have uh, rewarded uh, without comparing levels, the point here is that South Africa increased interest rates by 475 basis points starting in November 2021. And we were doing this apace, and it was in measured, uh, measured steps. The U.S. had had to hike rates by over 500 uh, basis points. And yes, they had come from a low base, but that just reflected how much they had had to catch up. And they were hiking rates by 75 basis points when we were still moving at uh, a, a, a lower uh, adjustments. So that is what you face. And so the narrative here is that inflation has become persistent. And with inflation remaining persistent, policy will have to be calibrated to, uh, to do that. And so the world over, people are talking about interest rates being uh, high for longer, and that means tighter uh, financing conditions for a small open economy like South Africa that uh, is a sh savings short. We are going to have to attract foreign savings, and unfortunately, we are faced with this difficult situation where global interest rates are high for longer. I mean, on the outlook, the inflation outlook, what are some of these risks that you're seeing that uh, could continue? as you say, to persist for us as a country and prevent it from going back to that midpoint that you target between 3 and 
by the way, we are not too far from, from the 4.5%, uh, the, uh, the and that is why. You don't think the fuel prices will affect it in the short uh, term? Uh, well, uh, we, we, we see through the temporary shocks, but what we're seeing is that we're not too far, and that is why in the previous two meetings we thought, let us pause, let us see uh, what is actually happening. So the risks will obviously come from fuel. Um, with food, food prices had been coming down, but for South Africa, food prices were not coming down as fast. And the reason for South Africa was that it was an exchange rate story. Uh, our currency had depreciated by at, at close to 9% this year. And so that arrested the, uh, the pace at which food prices uh, were uh, declining. And now there is a risk or a threat of the El Nino. If the El Nino effect does set in, that could mean that not only would food prices stop going down that that but actually uh, could be going up and then of course because the global interest rates are going to be high for longer that has got implications for our uh, exchange rate so a combination then of the risks is uh, exchange rate that could uh, uh, remain weak uh, food prices re uh, being sticky or even rising and fuel prices that are Rising, and those are the key risks that we yeah, are. Facing. I just want to ask you an overriding question: Sh Should should you be looking at whether the current inflation targeting policy is adequate, uh, considering our economic situation? Well, our, from your intro, you have just told me from your intro that we should be targeting inflation because your intro and what Clint uh, uh, was saying is that households are complaining that the high cost of living is eroding their income. That is inflation. That is basically uh, what it is. Uh, uh, the cost of living comes at a particular level. That is the level. But what led it to go high is inflation that was continuing uh, to, uh, uh, to rise. So the framework is there. It's just there to assure us that uh, the central bank does consider does get concerned about price stability and would like to ensure price stability and will take actions uh, to do so. But then at least South Africans also know where would the central bank want to see uh, that uh, inflation uh, uh, rate being. Yeah, recently I think one of your reports in the Reserve Bank uh, was showing that there has been a contraction in household consumption, mm -hmm. for example. And But we, we, we know now that uh, debt is surpassing disposable income, and we're very much aware of that. How, how does the Reserve Bank in that scenario navigate the interest rate cycle uh, with data of this kind? Um, it's, it's, it's tough. One of the things that uh, uh, central bankers do not lack uh, is a lot of economic advice. So the, the, there are lots of people besides the uh, 2,000 odd men and women at the Reserve Bank. The issue is a shortage of uh, a shortage of advice. No, uh, the point here had been that um, uh, although household debt has risen as a percentage of disposable income, South African households have been actually pretty. Prudent. We are nowhere close to the levels where we had seen in the past where households' debt to disposable income was like at 80% uh, or so. It is in the 60s, uh, in the 60s now. Uh, what is of concern had been that um, what we call household debt service costs, uh, uh, what they pay to service their mortgages and service their cars, it had risen. In 2020, it went to all the way it was low as a percentage of disposable income, just over 6%. It is now uh, just over 8%. But even then, it is still in line with, uh, uh, with historic trends. So you've got to navigate, to navigate these things. Households feeling the pressure of prices. So you want to rein in the prices. And at the same time, the households are also saying that we have got debt to service and you have got to be constantly looking at those and m taking a policy stance that is uh, yeah. uh, appropriate. I guess the other side of higher interest rates is that if you are saving or you've got savings, there's a benefit uh, to you. Definitely. But South Africans would say, uh, but, they, but we are not saving. But that is a subject of, uh, 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 of another day. Uh, the, the, the point here is that savers play a very important role uh, in, uh, uh, in this economy uh, because... Um, investments and um, uh, borrowings are taking place from, from the savings uh, pool. And in our case, 
we are having a shortage of, of savings. Our investment needs are more than our savings uh, availability. And as a result of that, we run a current account deficit. That means that we have to try and attract foreign savings to meet our investment needs. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, trade and budget deficits now for, for, for a while, uh, Governor. Uh, what clues uh, are this is giving about the health of our economy? I mean, as a nation, currently, we all know we're spending more than uh, our income, uh, than more we are producing as well. We import more than we export, uh, another one. I mean, uh, these kind of deficits cannot be sustained for a long period. No, and uh, one of the risks that we had identified for uh, emerging markets across the world is that those emerging markets that have got high financing needs, both external and domestic, uh, are at risk of capital outflows and depreciation of their currencies. And so now let's take the South Africa and let's look at the domestic, the domestic part. Um, in February, the Minister of Finance said that we are going to run a small primary a surplus and a primary surplus is not that the government is overall running a surplus it just means that we are generating resources to be able to service the debt right it is it, it, it is put simply as that revenue is disappointed so far and the indications are that the deficit will be higher with the deficit higher and a, a limited savings pool we actually need to attract foreign capital to finance a uh, to finance our deficit but also the government is the prime borrower uh, in this economy um, if anybody has to lend money they would prefer to lend to government first before they lend to uh, anybody else because just of the size of the government in the uh, in the economy and what we then face is that because we have to be attracting a foreign capital Foreigners want to be compensated for that. But even South African investors would want to be compensated for the fact that government is borrowing more than what it said it, was go it is going to, uh, to borrow. And that raises the borrowing costs across the economy uh, for, uh, for all of us. And so you have mentioned that we are um, uh, importing more than we are exporting. Uh, actually, the exports are still, we are, okay, We're we are, exporting, good, we are okay. exporting more than we are importing in terms of goods. Uh, but there are the other aspects, what mm -hmm. we call the services account, where we are actually uh, importing more than what we are exporting. And so that manifests itself in the, what we call the current account deficit. The current account deficit put in simple terms is the difference between your savings mm -hmm. and your investment. Mm -hmm. And so we have got high investment needs for a limited pool of savings. That gap has to come from elsewhere. That is the current account deficit. And so South Africa then, the economies will say, is running twin deficits. We have got to finance externally and we've got to finance domestically. Okay, what about your growth outlook? I mean, have you revised it upwards recently? I yes, we did. What has informed that? Um, the resilience of the South African economy actually surprised many economies, including the central bank. Um, in, uh, at the beginning of the year, uh, we thought that growth in the South African economy will be 0.2%. Uh, and uh, many market commentators thought that we are optimistic because people had 0 0.1 and 0 uh, a percent. Um, we've recently revised it up to 0.7 percent, and part of it had to do with the fact that uh, investment has proved out to be stronger than uh, we had thought. And where is this the driver of investment? The investment is in embedded generation and in uh, uh, renewables and getting security of uh, uh, of energy uh, of energy supply and that is in a way good because that means we are alleviating the energy constraint but as it was said earlier on but it also raises the cost because these are the costs that businesses didn't plan to have mm -hmm. and they might end up passing uh, them through but at least there is investment taking place and we can see that uh, power is getting you've got the place. resilience that you say surprise you but i mean there, there, there remains some possible shocks or, or risk maybe especially in the, in the energy sector in the short to medium term there are there are the risks including tighter global financial conditions but brandon we have revised the growth uh, up from 0 0.2 uh, percent to 0 0.7 percent the population of this country is growing faster than that that means we are uh, becoming a uh, poorer as a nation we should actually be taking the economic trajectory of this economy higher 
And that entails us having to make those difficult decisions that we have always been postponing, what we had called the difficult microeconomic reforms, also known as structural reforms, that are required to lift the potential growth rate of this economy. Yeah, I mean, while we wait for those, I don't know if they'll happen because there's been a call for the structural reform for some time now. You've recently won government uh, over spending risks, for example. Just, just tell us more about the consequences of uh, fiscal recklessness. You know, generally we do not comment about uh, fiscal policy and I wouldn't characterize South African fiscal stance as uh, reckless, but it's not for me to, uh, to judge them. Uh, but where as a central bank we have concerns um, about fiscal, which have to do with the role that fiscal policy plays in that country risk premium that uh, I have talked about. And if government's fiscal stance is deemed not to be prudent or is seen not to be prudent consistently, that country risk premium goes up and we have seen it has gone up for South Africa. And with an elevated country risk premium, the cost of borrowing for the government is higher. And with the cost of borrowing for the government being higher, your cost of borrowing, my cost of borrowing is bound to be higher. And that inflicts cost. Uh, on the economy. And so sometimes people uh, think, they talk of this and say that, well, only may if we could have growth, then our debt problems will, uh, oh, get, yeah. uh, will go away. And it says, well, you seem not to understand that growth needs capital. Government is increasing the cost of capital because of its fiscal stance, mm -hmm. and that you could reach a situation where fiscal policy itself could be a constraint of, on growth. Mm. Now, now uh, Governor, I need to ask you this I mean, before we conclude. How do you see the role of the Reserve Bank going forward, especially in underpinning economic sustainability of the entire country? Well, the Constitution says that uh, we must maintain price stability in the interest of balance and sustainable growth. So you can't... Price stability is not an end in, its, as, in, as, in itself. It is a necessary condition for sustained and balanced growth but it is not an end of uh, itself it is not a sufficient condition for us to experience sustained balanced uh, uh, and balanced growth in the republic yeah your term is going to end next year am i correct november what? next year no, november next year yes it's, it's about a year from now i just need to ask you this i mean you are seen whether you are aware of it or not as a voice that's critical to the sober economic management of South Africa in terms of your role as a central bank governor. Would you yield to what is being seen as an extravagant spending urges of the governing party, the ANC, to extend your mandate? Um, we do not comment on what political parties uh, say. Um, the president is the appointing authority. Um, uh, we still have some time. I think he must, the president must be given uh, the space to engage in such a, a conversation and give him the space to pronounce on it. Yeah, I mean, would you be concerned that uh, the, the governing party or the president might want a more lenient hand I, 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 in terms of this role? Because there are voices that says certain things must change. He will, have to, he will have to violate the constitution. The constitution gives us a mandate and it says that we must act independently and without fear, favor or prejudice. So if he comes and he says that, I will reappoint you, but on condition that you do the following, I will tell him, if you want to violate the Constitution, go ahead, violate it, but I will not be party to the violation of the Constitution. Okay. Do you believe at any point that the independence and what is seen as a conservatism of the Reserve Bank is under threat? Um, the independence uh, had previously been under attack, not necessarily under threat. It had been under attack. And uh, we stood up uh, to it and made sure that we act in terms of the constitution. I wouldn't call the Reserve Bank conservative. I would call the Reserve Bank prudent. Yeah. F finally, I just saw a comment. I, I don't think you have seen it. Uh, re it's it's an, an opinion piece written by Alex Mashilo on the 2nd of, of this month. 
uh, of the Communist Party, and he's headlined, Put the People uh, First Fight. And he mentioned something about the Reserve Bank. Now, I just wanted to get you to comment on this, uh, 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 Governor, before, before you go. He says, the South African Reserve Bank's gold and foreign exchange contingency reverse reserve account, he said it should be used, it should be dipped into as one of a revenue generation measure. He says it's a costless means of closing the entire budget mismatch, drawing down on the 459 billion rand owed to the government in the Reserve Bank's gold and foreign exchange contingency reserve account. Any comment on that? Um, what is he talking about? Well, well you know, he is a, uh, a politician, um, and politicians like saying they have been quoted out of context. So it will be difficult for me to just yes. comment on that yeah. without reading the whole thing. But I think for the benefit of the viewers, we can talk about what the gold and foreign exchange yes. reserve contingency account is. The gold and foreign exchange contingency account is an account where profits and losses from reserves and from the foreign exchange uh, markets and from the gold reserves uh, are accredited. In the years gone by, this account was in debit, which means that it had made so much losses during what viewers might remember when we talk about the net open forward position. And the Reserve Bank was making all of those losses, and those losses were for the account of the government, and they would go into the gold and foreign exchange contingency reserve uh, account. Those losses fluctuate with the market, depending on what happens to the exchange rate or what expenses to the interest rate, those losses uh, fluctuate. Cut a long story short, the Treasury had to pay the Reserve Bank, I think, in tranches of 70 billion rands over a period of uh, three years. Since then, the Reserve Bank has built reserves of the country, and because we have built reserves of the country, the reserves of the country Again, this time round for the past three years, looks like they have generated some profits. The law provides that if there are those profits or there are losses in that account, the Minister of Finance and the Governor must engage in a conversation and take an appropriate step on how to settle uh, the balance or part of the balance, the conversation that the Minister mm -hmm. and I will have. Okay, thank you very much, Reserve Bank Governor Lisicha Khanyaho, uh, for your time this afternoon here on ENCA on DSTV Channel 403.